Hi, I'm Megan Walker and we've reached the letter J in the A to Z of real-time marketing. There should hopefully be no surprise that J is for journeys. So, you might think you know all about customer journeys, but it's a little bit different in real-time marketing. So let's go ahead and have a look and see how it works now. Okay, so if we have a look, we are in the marketing app and we're in real-time marketing. So this is what you will have been using up to this point, I would imagine. So if we go into customer journeys, the customer journeys in the outbound marketing, like I said, that's what you would have been used to. Let's give it a moment to open. So we're going to this one. So we can see where we've basically got a starting point and then we can go through and we can send emails, we can wait, we can send emails, we can wait, we can do whatever and we can branch out and do different things. So then we can see sort of how many people are going through each of those stages of the journey. Now, this is where at the moment it can be a little bit sort of confusing to wrap your head around. So you've got outbound um, marketing, which again is what you will have been using, that's where all your journeys will be sitting. And now we've got real-time marketing, and if I go into real-time marketing, we have journeys, and these journeys are not the same journeys as you have in outbound marketing. So these are two completely separate areas. The concept is the same in terms of you're taking a contact on a journey, you're having somebody start uh, from a trigger point because they joined a segment, something happened, and then they're going through a path that's where it stops in terms of it being the same. So the concept is the same, but because we've got the ability to have things start from a trigger, then they sit in a slightly different area. So hopefully over time that kind of comes together to where it's one place to go for journeys. But for now, if you're wanting to do a real-time journey because you want to send a text message, because you want to start it based on a trigger an event that happens rather than somebody going into a segment this is where you're going to do your journeys so it may be that you have some journeys in one place and some journeys in another all right so if we go ahead and we do a new journey now when we do a new journey it's similar in some regards it gives the journey a name so I'm just going to do um, a new opportunity process whatever it might be so Give it a name. Now we've got our two types. So we've got event based and we've got segment based. So if we look at segment based first of all, and if we do a um, look up, this is basically a list of all segments that exist in the system. So I could go ahead and I could pick one of those specific segments. And then when I've picked a segment, it then says, okay, well, what's the frequency? So we've got three options. We've got one time. So I'm going to take it whoever's in that and it's going to go and send it out. I've got one time and anyone new that joins, they're going to go through the journey as well. So in other words, maybe I've got one for um, customers and then as a new customer comes in, they start the journey. So as they go into the segment, they go through it. Or we can have a repeating journey. So if something needs to happen every um, week, every day oh every minute whoo but anyway in terms of like how often that would happen you can set that repeating and then when does it start so I've got a segment um, and if I pick that I want to start the journey now it has to be t uh, two hours from now um, at minimum before it could actually start and then you might have an end date as well so that's very similar to what you're used to outbound marketing customer journeys the fun new exciting part is to have a journey based on an event now we're going to look at this in another video in more depth as to how you create one but there are some some uh triggers that come out of the box with the marketing app so you'll have some in there already so if i press enter again we can see some of these are actually standard ones i've created a few new ones as well but one of them might be that when an opportunity is created. So that is a trigger that has been provided by Microsoft is essentially an opportunity is created and the contact that you've added to that opportunity, that's who will then start the journey. So I'm going to say that this journey could start from now. Now, 
Again, this has a repeatable process or a repeatable option. Um, and I might say that they can never repeat it, so it's a one-time thing. But if you consider, if you've got a process that needs to happen when an opportunity is created, you want that every single time. So this is perfect because I don't need to set up that it's recurring every one day and then try and put some people into a suppression list and then it, it gets convoluted the way that you have to do stuff with outbound marketing. So for this, we can basically say, anytime this trigger occurs, somebody can go through that process again which is great, but you also need to be careful and make sure you're not going to annoy people by pushing them through a process or a journey over and over and over again. Okay, so I've put in my, uh, the type, I've added what the event trigger is, and I'm going to go ahead and create it. Now from this point, it's very, very similar to creating your uh, outbound marketing customer journeys. So the top part has already started for us, and then we go ahead and we can click the plus. Now you'll notice that one thing that doesn't exist is you don't have a, a journey template to select from. You don't have to pick one of the options. You're basically going straight in based on what is the trigger. Then let's go in and actually build it. So I've got actions, sending an email, sending a text message, sending a push notification. <clears throat> so if I say send an email, then it's going to say, okay, well, what is the email? So what email do you want to send out? So I might send out email one and this, based on whatever I've set up in the um, uh, audience configuration area, this is basically whatever I've mapped the email address field to, which for most is going to be email one. So I'm saying send an email. I can also add an if then branch after that. So I can say, okay, so branch off this email. And then I can say if the email was opened or if a, a email link was clicked. And I can say if whatever was on the button text. Um, and then I can basically say that I want to wait X number of days or weeks or whatever. So I basically am saying if within three days this specific link was clicked if yes maybe I don't do anything if no because maybe I'm sending them something important about whatever the opportunity is related to a product that they've purchased a service that they've signed up for so if no maybe I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to send that email again or I'm going to send a follow-up email um, and then again I'm sending it to them and then I could do another if then branch off that email okay so we can go through just like we did before we can go through and build out these branches off of this full journey um, and, and take people through so if I click on here we've also got other things so we can then um, branch based off of a specific value we can um, do a B testing which we've looked at in one of the other videos um, we can do a hold so we can basically say okay well so if yes what are people waiting for? So if somebody has clicked on something, then we want to wait, but are we waiting a specific amount of time? Are we waiting until a specific date and time? Or maybe there's something on that event trigger. So we can see here, unfortunately on this trigger, there's nothing that's really passing through that is valuable, but you could create a trigger, and as part of that trigger, you could pass through dates and say, okay, well, this is the date that the opportunity was created, for example, or the product was sold. And you could actually use Power Automate to pass through the date that would be maybe five days from now or a week from now. And that would then be available as an attribute from the trigger to be able to use as our next step. So we're passing through a date. So we can do that sort of thing so we can wait or I could say wait for a specific amount of time and then let's wait for maybe two more days and then again we can carry on down and we can do further things we could also use things like AI so we could say right well, we're going to send a message next and then we're going to determine whether it would be text message or whether it would be email so there's additional pieces to this that we'd be able to expand upon to where you're truly sending a customized journey 
that could be different for, for, for each person, whether you're getting an email, whether you're getting a text message. Um, so building up the journey here is, uh, like I said, similar to what you're used to, so it shouldn't be too complicated, it's just the slightly different options. So if we uh, were ready, we can then do the same thing, we can save just like we do with the other ones, but then we're also going to see if there are any errors just like we did with outbound journeys as well. So then we can basically determine, okay, is there a goal that we need? What's the purpose of this? All of that sort of stuff. So if we go into our journeys and let's look at one of, uh, which one should we look at? Actually, this one. So what's going to happen then is as people start to go through the journeys, and we looked at this in the letter G where we talked about goals, we looked at this specific journey, we can see the total inflow, which means how many people have started at the top from whatever that trigger was, whether it was segment based or whether it was an event trigger. And we can then see how many people are going through and where they're at at this point in the journey. So we can see that there are six people in flow actually waiting a week, currently being processed, and none of them have made it yet to the end um, email but yet six people have gone through this email. So this shows us, just like it does on the other one, but it's a little bit clearer, is how people are going through the journey and where, where they sit within the journey. So one other thing that's a little bit different, so if I go in, let's just create a, another quick journey, um, and we'll just add one or two things to it. So let's go back to this and create and I'm just going to do an email okay so when we are ready to send this instead of going live we have a button that says publish so once it's published we can see that now it's live and this journey is now actually running and anybody that uh, is triggering the journey based on an opportunity is being created, so an opportunity is created, the contact that's tied to it, that will trigger the journey, will start people going through. Now, if we stop this, then that's it, you've ended the journey. You can create a new version of it, but once you've started it, that's, that's it. So, similar again to outbound journeys, you basically cannot slot things in once you've started it. So you need to be very, very careful um, about doing something or, or setting your journey live and not actually be ready for it. So we can see here that with my mouse hovered over that create a new version, it says open an editable version of your live journey so you can make changes and publish a new, uh, new version, then compare analytics between the two versions. It's basically creating a new one and this one would be over with. So very, very careful. Don't go live until you're absolutely ready and you've got all the components and all the pieces in there. So, lot to it and also this video should be used in conjunction with pretty much all of the others because things all kind of tie back to the journey um, and we'll be looking at different pieces of this as we go through the entire series. So let me know what you think. Um, ultimately, the journey's here very different from the journeys that you're used to. Again, you can have outbound journeys, you can have real-time marketing journeys, and you can happily have them coincide alongside each other. They're just not the same thing. So, let me know what you think. Hi, I'm Megan Walker. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and that you learned something from it. If you don't want to miss out on any other content, you can go ahead and click on my face below to subscribe. And if you want to watch the next video, you can do that by clicking over here and go ahead and get started. Thanks again.